Hi everyone, I'm Simona from VectorTwist, and welcome to this Adobe Illustrator tutorial where we'll be creating some cool looking isometric cubes with rounded corners. Stack them together, add neat color gradients, and also a semi-transparent effect to one of the cubes to give it a more clear like look. It's a pretty easy tutorial to follow along and you'll be able to create your own isometric cubes with rounded corners in no time. Before we start with this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already, so you'll never miss any of the Adobe Illustrator tutorials. And with that said, let's dive right away into Illustrator. In Adobe Illustrator CC I already have a document open. Create any document size, whatever suits you best. Then I'm going to turn on my guides. You'll see my isometric grid I've created. If you don't have one yet, watch my tutorial on how to create this isometric grid. The link is in the description. Next, let's create an isometric square with the pen tool. So I'm going to choose the pen tool, open up my swatches panel, and I'm going to pick my fill color. I have three colors here in my swatches panel. I have a base color, a highlight color, and a shadow color. This is usually a standard color setup for isometric design. If you want to use those colors, you can find the color codes in the description below. And we'll also use those colors for the gradients we'll be creating in this tutorial. So with my pen tool, I'm going to choose my base color for the fill. So I'm going to create a square on my artboard following my isometric grid. Once I've created the isometric square, with it still selected, we're going to add rounded corners. The easiest and best way to create an isometric view of rounded corners is to go to Effect, Stylize and choose Rounded Corners. In the pop-up window for rounded corners, I'm going to set my radius to 10 pixels. Just to see if that is enough, I click Preview and if I like it, I press OK. Next, we'll build up the cube to make it 3D looking. We need to duplicate it. Select the shape then press the optional ALT key and hold it. At the same time, press the SHIFT key, this will align it to the bottom shape and then just simply drag it up. This is the easiest and fastest way to create a duplicate in Illustrator. Then with the shape selected, I'm going to add my highlight color to the top shape so we can see it. The next step is very important. Usually we would just create the shape for the side, one shape here on the right side and another shape on the left side, and then we would call it done. But because we're going to turn our cube into a semi-transparent cube later on, we'll need to create also the back shapes for it. So let's create a copy of both shapes. We'll repeat the step, hold the Option and Alt key and drag it to the side. Then we're going to switch the fill to the stroke. So I'll select my shape and I can either press Shift and X on the keyboard to turn it into the stroke or I can select the shape and go to the Fill and Stroke tool and just click the little arrow here. This will switch the fill to the stroke. So we can see things better for the next step, I'm going to turn off my guides. The next step is important, we need to cut up the shapes. Since we worked with rounded corner effects, this is a live effect, we need to expand it. So select both of the shapes, go to object and check expand appearance. Then we're going to cut up the top shape and the bottom shape to create our front for the left and our front for the right. So simply select the scissors tool in the toolbar Shortcut for this is C. If you don't see it, it's usually underneath the eraser tool. Because I have my smart guides on, I see exactly where I need to click on the intersection on the left side, so I click once. I go to the other side and I click again. Then I'm going to select the bottom shape and repeat the step. So back to the scissors tool, one click on the left, one click on the right. Now we've cut up the pieces. The next step is to reconnect them. So I'll select the shapes for the back I'll put it upward so we can see it better. I'll choose the pen tool. I'll hover over my anchor point. I click and now I've connected both of the shapes. I'll repeat the step on the other side. Same I will do with the bottom. Back to the pen tool. One anchor point connected to the other and I'm going to go and do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to select my back shape and switch the stroke to a fill. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom. One last step. I want to select my back shape. I want to go to Optag, Arrange, and send it to the back. Now onto the gradients. Let's create a square and fill it with the black and white gradient in our swatches panel. With the last Illustrator update, the gradients have received an awesome cool update as well. Very much needed and it eases so many frustrations. I can simply open up the gradient panel 
and then I can double click my gradient stop and then I can either choose from my swatches panels the colors I like, create them myself or use the eyedropper tool to pick any color on my artboard. In our case we're going to pick the base color from our swatches panel for the left gradient stop and for the right gradient stop I'm going to choose my shadow color. Once I applied it to my square I'm going to open up my swatches panel. I'm simply going to the fill and then drag the fill into my swatches panel. This will add the gradient into my swatches panel. Then I can go back to my shape here in the front and apply the gradient. In my gradient panel you can see I have set the radius to zero, my base color on the left side, my shadow color on the right side. We're going to select the back shape as well and apply this gradient to it as well. Now let's assemble our cube. I'll select my back shape, move it to the bottom. Then I'm going back to my original shapes. I have to select them and expand them. So back to object, expand appearance. I'm going to select my bottom shape, place it behind everything and select my top shape and make sure it's all the way on the top. Since our light comes from the top left, we need to create a little bit of a highlight to our top shape. Right now it's filled with our highlight color, but we need to switch it to the base color and then add a gradient, giving a little bit of a highlight on the left side here. So I'll select my shape, I'll go and fill it with the gradient I've just created, and I'm going to alter my gradient stops. I'll select my left gradient stop, double click it, choose my highlight color, go back to my gradient stop on the right, and make sure it is set to the base color. Once I've done that, I'll grab my fill and drag it also into my swatches panel. Now I have two gradients added to my swatches panel, the one for the front and the side pieces and the one for the top. We want to create a cube that has a semi-transparent look. So let's grab a copy of the just the top and the back shape. So use the selection tool and create a small rectangle on top of the back and then press and hold the shift key and select the front. Use the duplicate shortcut and drag everything onto the side. It's important that we did not copy the bottom of our shape since we want to stack the semi-transparent like cube on top of the original one. Now in order to give our Illustrator cube a semi-transparent effect, all we need to do is one simple step. It's important that none of the shapes are grouped. Then select all of the shapes that we've just copied, which means the back, the front and the top, and then go to the opacity settings on top of here and type 45%. You can either leave it colored like I have it here or we can change the color to give it a bit more clear look. Let me move things over. All we have to do is select the semi-transparent cube. We'll go to edit, edit colors and we'll choose recolor artwork. In my pop-up window I'll switch to edit. Then I'll make sure my link is clicked so all of my colors are linked together no matter which color I move. And then down here in the saturation slider I'll just push the saturation down. And as you can see on the artboard, just simply make sure recolor art is checked. You can see that now we're getting a little bit more of a semi-transparent look. If you like it, simply press OK. I want to keep my colored one, so I'm not going to press OK. I'll just click Cancel. Next, all we have to do is stack the cubes and add some drop shadows. My favorite way is to use the feather effect in Illustrator. So grab a copy of the cube, then fill it with a really dark color. Then I'm going to Effect. Stylize and choose Feather. In my pop-up I'm going to choose 15 pixels for my feather radius. I check Preview and then I press OK. Now in my Opacity layer settings I'm going to switch from Normal to Multiply and then I'm going to place it all the way to the back. So I'll select it, go back to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. Since my light is coming from the top left I want to arrange it underneath my cube and make sure that it's sticking out a little bit and then push it to the right. After that I'm going to select my shadow and the cube and group everything. Then I'm going to select the grouped shapes and I'm going to create copies of it and stack them on top of each other. In the end I'm going to select my semi-transparent cube and then place it on top. Now you can use an isometric cube with rounded corners for any other design. May it be for website design, app design or any other cool things you'll create with it. Now in case you wanted different kind of colors it's really easy to change the colors in Adobe Illustrator. So all we have to do is select everything. I'll drag a copy onto the side. Go back to Edit. Choose Edit Colors. Recolor Artwork. In my pop-up, I'll switch back to Edit. Make sure my colors are linked. And then I simply drag them around. And see what happens on the artboard. I can give it 
a much brighter color, for example, orange. If I don't like orange, I'll drag it into my pinks or I'll drag it into my purples. This is really up to you. Let's say I really like an orange. I'll simply afterwards press OK and my whole cube stack up is recolored. Now what if I wanted to create different sizes? I simply going to create a copy of my solid cube, drag it onto the side. I'll ungroup it so I can move my shadow away. And then with the lasso tool, I'm going to select my back anchor points, my left anchor points, my right anchor points, and my front anchor points. Now they're all selected and I'm going to push everything to the top and use my arrow keys on my keyboard. And now you can increase your cube in size. Then I'm simply moving my shadow back to the bottom and I group it. Of course, if I don't like the color, I simply select everything again, go back to edit and then recolor it. It's really that simple. You can create many shapes like this out of one cube. Recolor it, change the size and then build up your whole graphic. This isometric cube with rounded corners that we've just created, I've used in my design. As you can see here, I built my web design with this isometric cube and I've changed the colors. Just try it out. You can easily switch the colors from one cube to the other. Then I've placed them, of course, on my isometric grid and connected them with some really cool highlight lines. Just to emphasize as if we would be creating a web design for a cloud-based data center. And that's it. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you liked about this tutorial or what you didn't like. Also, please share your own creations. I would love to see what you'll come up with. Just make sure to tag Vector Twist on social media. And of course, give this tutorial a like, hit the subscribe button too, and make sure you also press the notification bell, so you'll be notified when the next Vector Twist tutorial is live. I'll see you next time.